Marcus, the latest jobless figures from France. Yeah, the latest figures, uh, they're not an encouraging read from a French perspective. The number of people who are looking for jobs uh, actually went higher last month. There's still no sign that the French labour market is healing with uh, jobless queues uh, still growing. After a pretty stable month of March, the number of job seekers increased by around 15,000 in April. Uh, let's uh, take a closer look at the figures. Uh, the higher April figure means that there are nearly 3.4 million people looking for work. There you go, 14,800 extra job seekers uh, during the month of April. Now, that 3.4 million figure is uh, another record high for France since records began. In percentage terms, unemployment was still higher back in the 1990s, but the population has grown since. And if we stay with uh, jobs in France, General Electric pledges to create a 1,000 new uh, positions in France if it wins the race for Alstom. GE's uh, chief executive uh, Jeffrey Immelt made that promise, meeting with the French president on Wednesday. Sources close to the matter say Immelt said that extra jobs would be created over the next three years. GE is trying to push the merits of a 12.3 billion euro offer for Alstom's energy business. Germany Siemens is also in the race and says it will detail its offer further by mid-June. Now, we talked about the jobless figures earlier. Here's another headache for the French government. A budget watchdog says it has concerns about the government's pledge to reduce its deficit. It comes as the Court of Auditors says it's identified a hole of 14.6 billion euros in the uh, government's 2013 accounts. The watchdog criticised the government for miscalculating and overestimating tax receipts in particular. Josh Vardy has more. An awkward exit from the Elysee for France's finance minister. Michel Sapin chose to dodge reporters' questions over Wednesday's revelation that the government faces a huge deficit on its 2013 revenues. Government tax revenues have been increasing over the past four years, but at a much smaller rate than expected. That's left a gap of almost 15 billion euros between projected government figures and reality. If there is a gap, it's because the growth we had anticipated was not met. The government originally projected the French economy to grow by 0.8% in 2013. However, it ended the year with only 0.3% growth. Lower taxes on businesses have been blamed by the socialists for the less than expected figure, but a drop in household spending also brought in less VAT. The opposition say it's proof that too much tax kills revenues. The more you raise tax, the more you send a signal to households and businesses that you have to save money in order to pay taxes. The French Court of Auditors have reprimanded the government, calling their projections wildly inaccurate. Internationally, the deficit could prove embarrassing, especially after promises to Europe and creditors that France would take important steps towards reducing the country's debt. Stock markets next and in the United States this hour. We've seen the S&P 500 uh, going uh, positive. Uh, it is uh, currently up around about 0.1%. Uh, as you can see, though, the other main indices, uh, the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq, are slightly below the flat line. Consumer-related stocks uh, like retailers and car makers are seen to be weighing on the indices uh, this session. Uh, European markets, they ended uh, the session on Wednesday mixed uh, with the, the DAX in Frankfurt, falling back somewhat, somewhat, I say, only marginally, really. That index was uh, weighed by weaker than expected unemployment figures from Germany. The number of jobless in Germany increased by 24,000 in May. And if we take a look at some individual company news, Swiss food giant Nestle is wading further into the skin and beauty business. It's paying the Canadian company Valiant $1.4 billion for the right to sell lip and wrinkle treatments in the US and Canada. Products like uh, Restylane and Sculptra are used to uh, reduce wrinkles in the face. Nestle is uh, currently expanding its skin business. It's already struck a deal to take full control of a joint venture with L'Oréal of France. Shares in GlaxoSmithKline came under pressure during Wednesday's trading in London. It came after Britain's serious fraud office said it had launched a formal investigation into the British drug maker's business practices. The SFO isn't providing any further details at this stage. It follows two weeks after Chinese police charged the former boss of GlaxoSmithKline's business in China of corruption.
And we're gonna finish up with this. Google is steering towards a new business segment, unveiling plans to build self-driving cars. The company says that the vehicles won't have a steering wheel and they won't have any accelerator or brake pedals. Google says it will build around 100 prototypes at first and that cars with manual controls will start tests in a few months. It's seen as uh, unlikely though, that Google will go into large scale vehicle production and it says uh, it's looking to partner with uh, other firms. Okay, that is the business news for now. I'm gonna let uh, Annette take back the steering wheel with uh, the other headlines. Couldn't resist that one, could you, Marcus? It's Marcus Carlson with the day's wrap of the business news. And for the latest on sports news, I'm now joined here